The Astros continue their dominance in Detroit as they take two out of three from the Detroit Tigers. And they're looking pretty good so far. Honestly, I mean, I thought that after they had dropped two out of three in the Bronx, that's they would pretty much go back to deja vu. But they didn't, and they appear to be in good shape as they for their next homestand. So we're going to talk all about it. Alrighty, guys. So uh, this might actually turn out to be a much longer video than what I would usually post for these because we're actually going to be talking about two series in a single video. And why is that the case, you might ask? Well, unfortunately, I was actually out of town this past weekend. So I was at, because my brother had actually was actually graduating from Oklahoma. So congrats to him, I guess. But um, but yeah, I was actually not in town to um, you know, watch the final game of our three game series against the Yankees in the Bronx. So, and because of that, I was not able to record a series recap video for just that series alone. So because of that, we're going to be re recapping both that series and our most recent series in Detroit. So let's, uh, we're going to start with the rather tough one against the Yankees where the Astros were bullied by the Yankees for the first two games where Justin Verlander, he looked really rough in the first game. Yeah, as the Yankees bullied him early. Spencer Irrigetti, who started game two of the series, a very similar treatment. And obviously, I couldn't really watch uh, the final game either because I wasn't in town for it. But um, but the Astros were able to salvage um, the series finale in that in, in that series, which is nice. With Jordan Alvarez, he went yard in the first inning. Singleton, who came up two batters later, also hit a home run of his own with both of their exit velocities going at 116.8 miles an hour and 115.4 and 115 miles an hour, respectively, which makes them the only teammates to hit home runs with exit velocities that high in the same inning in the StatCast era, which dates back to 2015. The Yankees had done it a couple of times themselves, I think four times over that span. The most recent, I think, came a couple of years ago. They've done it plenty of times, like over the course of a game, but none of those four times had come over the course of a single inning. And I mean, at first I would thought that that would be the rest of the offense that the Astros would need. So Blanco had started in this game, and it seemed that he was, and it seemed that he would be able to spark a, to provide a spark in the Astros' starting rotation, and he certainly did that as he held the Yankees to just two runs. When those, of course, coming on a home run by Anthony Volpe, to make it rather interesting. But, I mean, the Astros in this game in particular did struggle with men on base because, I mean, they really should have been up by at least a couple of runs at this point in the game instead of it being this close. And, I mean, it really was a close game because um, because Pena's RBI single would end up looming huge because a little bit later, with Ryan Presley in the game, Aaron Judge hit a deep home run off of him to make it a one-run game. Thankfully, though, Hader, despite, have, despite the Yankees have the tying it run in scoring position in the bottom of the ninth inning, he would, to, he would get the final three outs to slam the door and deny the Yankees the season sweep of the Astros. So, unfortunately, the Astros will lose the season series to the Yankees for the second year in a row. But honestly, I don't really care. I mean, obviously, the Yankees are far superior than us, and that could loom, could loom huge come October. But we'll see what happens. So, uh, but anyway, let's go into this series against the Tigers. So, um, so, uh, from Reveldez had started game one in this series and a two on double by Matt Vierling of the Tigers got the scoring started in this game and the Astros were entering the eighth inning at down by just one, down by, down by just one run. Kyle Tucker, um, I think an inning or two earlier had gotten our scoring started with a home run. His, um, which I believe was his 12th at the time of this video, which is one of two home runs that he would hit in this series. And then and then the Astros would then sco go on to score four runs in the eighth inning to put the Astros ahead. And then, and then Hayter would come on in the bottom half of the ninth inning to get his second save in as many games to give the Astros the series opening victory against the Tigers. Game two of the series... I didn't watch any of it because you know, just because again I was out of town. But um, but in game two of the series, the Tigers answered right back as Javier, who was making his first start since coming off the injured list, showed some signs of rust as the Tigers would tag him, I believe, for seven runs, and he didn't even make it out of the second inning. But Hunter Brown, on the other hand, really carried the bullpen in this game as the Astros were able to milk him for, I believe, five innings, or I believe uh, five shutout innings, I believe. So that was uh, that was a sight for surprise for a guy who has had a very down, who has had a very down season. And, um, and, it, and, it, and so far, Joe Espada has not announced who's going to be starting the series finale. It could be either Brown or Javier. 
but I mean, we'll see what happens. I guess, you know, my best guess is that it would be Javier. I mean, I know a lot of fans would be thinking that we should put Hunter Brown on there, especially after how well he did. But Javier is the better starting pitcher. He's a lot better than Hunter Brown. Yes, that I mean, yes, but one game for Hunter Brown pitching like this is just a small sample size. But at the same time, like, I mean, now that now that Javier's back and Jose Urquidy is going to be coming back here at some point in the near future. In fact, um, I actually do have an update on Jose Urquidy, if I can get it pulled up here. And he ended up going two and, a two, th- two and two-thirds innings pitched in his first rehab start. I'm not, I actually don't know who he pitched for. I think it might be Sugar Land or, or, or Corpus. I don't know. But um, yeah, two and two-thirds innings pitched, gave up three runs and struck out three. So uh, that was a good rehab start for him. We should be seeing him in the starting rotation at some point real soon. And then at that point, I would imagine that Hunter Brown's going to be going to the bullpen. Um, if not, he might get sent down. Now, unfortunately for the Astros, as we talk about roster updates here, uh, they unfortunately had to designate uh, two players for assignments, and those being Corey Jokes and also most recently Brandon Bielak because Brandon Bielak unfptionately was out of options. One of the rules when it comes to optioning players to AAA and you know recalling them and all that is that you can only do so five times over the course of a season. And unfortunately for Brandon Bielak, the, he was out of those options, and so the Astros had to DFA him. Now, if he clears waivers, then I would believe that he'd be able to stay in AAA outright. But if not, and but if some other team get, claims him off the waivers, then you know he'll sign with that team. And uh, the same also applies for Corey Jokes. And I'm sad to see him go, considering that he played baseball for University of Houston. So he's a Houston native. So and again, I'm sad to see him go. But I understand that it might be for the best. So, and then, yeah, we'll see. And we'll possibly end up seeing who else may have to get sent down to clear a roster spot for Jose Urquidy and also Lance McCullers and Luis Garcia later this season. But anyway, um, but yeah, Javier greatly struggled in this game and we're not going to talk much about it. And instead, we're going to go We're going to go straight to game three where the Astros had put on a Mother's Day barrage against the Tigers, scoring, I believe, nine runs, conquering them nine to three, with uh, all nine starters for the Astros getting hits today. Dubon also got his first career four-hit game. He had 16 three-hit games prior to this, but this was the first four-hit game of his career. And he also had a chance to get a five-hit game, which was actually something that Jose Altuve, who got the day off today, has not gotten in his career. And Jeremy Pena and George Springer had also got, had actually gotten six hit games prior to this but yeah he has not had a five hit game yet so but but in addition to that um so i've taken notes on all this but uh, the astros also set a new season high with 17 hits in this game i think and jv today well he was vintage jv with throwing set seven shutout innings with eight k's and, and generated 14 swings and misses on his fastball after he had gotten none in his start in the Bronx. Now, obviously, I mean, the Tigers lineup is certainly not like this. The Yankees lineup is certainly not like this. But there is no doubt that Justin Verlander looked a lot better today than than he did in that start in the Bronx. And, I mean, that's a good thing. Like, the Astros expect JV to be putting up starts like this whenever he comes out on the mound. Now, obviously, it's is that realistic? Is he going to have bad starts at some point? Absolutely. And... That's one thing that, unfortunately, even for a future Hall of Famer like him that we're just going to have to embrace, he is going to have his struggles at one point or another, and his last start in the Bronx was the perfect example of that. So, and this game was a pitcher duel up through the sixth inning, I think, where until Tucker got the scoring started with a two-run home run, which was his 13th home run of the season, which now leads the league. And that's good, which was cool to see. And then also, and then last but certainly not least, um, Jake Myers, who he came off the bench and he got three RBIs to contribute for the Astros today. And then, like I said, all nine starters for the Astros today each got base hits. I believe, um, yeah, Dubon had four hits. Jordan, I believe, had two hits. Uh, those, those, I think, are the some of the things that I know without pulling up the box score here. But um, and then Seth Martinez did get the final six outs but not before he snapped the shutout in the bottom of the ninth inning and gave up three runs to the Tigers to, you know, ensure that they wouldn't be shut out. But that's okay because the Astros at the end of the day did take two out of three in this weekend series in Detroit, going three and three on this road trip, which it's not bad. Next up for the Astros, they will have an opportunity to gain some ground in the division as they prepare to host the Oakland Athletics for the first time this season. 
And, I mean, I'm not sure if I'll be at any of those games, but um, but the A's are looking pretty good. Like, they are definitely one of the surprise teams in baseball. Like, they are actually playing very good. And it's shocking to see that they're actually ahead of the Astros coming into uh, coming into play today. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how, I mean, we'll see how uh, challenging they are. They seem to are for a team that we, that we seemingly had beaten rather handily last season. Following that, we'll be hosting the Milwaukee Brewers for three games to, for a seven-game homestand. Or no, not, not a seven-game homestand. And then the following week, the Astros will be playing host to the LA Angels, who are the one team that's been behind us so far in the division. So... Uh, this should be a pretty good homestand, a good opportunity for the Astros to gain some ground a little bit, put, finally start putting things together with the bulk end of our starting rotation with JV, Farmer, and Christian Javier all back and healthy. So, I mean, I would expect the Astros to take at least a series sweep in the mix. That would really be cool to see. But realistically, dude, my expectation should be that all three of these series need to be series wins. Even a series split, I'm not going to be proud of. Like, we need to be going into the mindset with winning every single series. I mean, I don't care. If, I mean, I don't expect us to go on a super long win streak or anything like that. We've done it before. But at this point in the season, I don't really expect us to do that. But, but you know, I mean, the most I can ask for is just, you know, win every single series, you know, get closer to 500 and just, you know... Look where you're at, come and then you know, come June, you'll say like, "Hey, we're back in it." Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Um, I'm sorry again that there was no video that last weekend since I was out of town for my brother's graduation, but um, but but nonetheless, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Ghost Rose.